Hello, my name is Beth Dixon, and this is a video series based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentation on correlation in linear relationships. Please note, as you watch this, the students are required to have a table of critical values that test the claim that the slope is not zero. I wish to thank Mrs. Borlaug for allowing me to use her PowerPoint to make this set of videos. And please remember that we will cover on how to find the linear relationships on a TI-83 or 84 calculator in a separate video. We start this video by talking about the linear correlation coefficient that we define by the variable R. And the correlation coefficient that is a value between negative 1 and 1. Look at the number line. Mrs. Borlaug has drawn a number line from negative 1 to 1 and indicated some of the values in between. The correlation coefficient r can fall anywhere on this number line. If it falls at 0, there is absolutely no correlation. If it falls at negative 1, there is a perfect negative correlation. If it falls at positive 1, there is a perfect positive correlation. Those are rare. Generally, we have lots of correlations that fall in between. If it falls toward the negative 1 at the lower end of our range, it will be considered a strong negative correlation. These are not exact numbers, but a general trend. If it falls close to the 0 on the negative sign, we consider that a weak negative correlation. If it falls close to the zero on the positive side, we consider this a weak positive correlation. And if it falls close to the positive one, we consider this a strong positive correlation. Notice the range that we have. Notice that does leave a couple of gaps between the strong negative correlation and a weak negative correlation, and between the weak positive correlation and the strong positive correlation. These gaps that are not marked, I personally consider those as moderate correlations. The one on the left on the negative side that falls in the range here, I would consider this a moderate negative correlation, and the one on the positive side a moderate positive correlation. But again, these are not absolute values. So how can we make some judgments on what our correlation coefficient means? Now that we know we need some more information to do those. But now that we know what kind of linear relationships fall along the continuum of our number line, let's look at what those might look like by giving some examples of these numbers. If it is a perfect negative correlation, that means the pairs of numbers when graphed fall into a perfect line. A line would hit and go through them exactly. And this is an example of r equaling negative 1. With r equaling 0 point, negative 0 0.96, you can see that it's a slightly less perfect line. A line drawn through those would not hit every point, but it is very definitely a strong linear trend. At r equaling 0 point, negative 0 0.83, it is still a negative slope, and we can see that it's slightly less linear than the previous two as it moves toward or moves away from the negative one. 
Next we'll go to an R equaling negative 0.01 and we can see that that's approaching a slope of 0 and we can see that there is very little, little linear relationship here as the slope approaches 0. As we approach the strong positive correlation Notice that R equals 0 0.83 and we move in a positive slope and it's beginning to look more like a line. As R equals 0 0.96 it becomes even closer and then at R equals 1 we're back to an exact perfect line. The linear regression equation should only be used to make predictions if there is a linear relationship. And to check for a linear relationship, we look at the scatter plot and visually verify that the data has a general linear trend. And if the absolute value of the R is greater than the table value, there is evidence of a linear relationship. Using the table value this way tests the claim that the slope is not zero. If the absolute value of R is not greater than the table value, the data does not provide evidence of a linear relationship. Linear relationships have a non-zero slope. Notice that this involves two steps, looking at the graph and then comparing your correlation coefficient to the table value from your chart. When we do the second step, we are not concerned if the R value is positive or negative. So we are looking at the absolute value. Notice that is indicated in the two places here. It's the absolute value compared to the chart. We're not concerned about, about whether this is a negative correlation or a positive correlation, just whether there is a linear relationship existing. This is a good place to stop and we'll begin the second video at this point. Please continue watching for part two.